Arians, I am Hody Johns. I am your host. I am here with Elaine Joan. Elaine, how are you doing today? Good. How are you? Doing great. Thank you. Uh, we're going to be talking about recruiting Justin Amash and how that's been going. Obviously, uh, this is being recorded on July 5th. Uh, July 4th, we had some pretty big news. Uh, Justin Amash officially had, is not just is leaving, has left the Republican Party. He is no longer a member of the GOP. He is an independent. So, uh, Elaine, let's start with everything that you can think of that has led up to what happened yesterday with Justin Amash. Um, I think if you have kept any sort of eye on Justin, on his Twitter, on his Facebook, on his um, very few media appearances that he's been doing over the last four to five months, um, we all knew that this was coming. It was just a matter of time. Um, some people speculated it would be closer to the end of the year. Um, but Independence Day was a really great day to make that kind of a declaration. Yeah, uh, declared his independence as an independent. Now, you had some interesting perspective about that, because I think a lot of people were like, wait, I thought he was going to be a libertarian. And then even yes. in the state, he's even in his own statement, he's like, well, I'm an independent now. And, and the New York Times says independent. But you did notice it's a lowercase I. What does that mean? Yes. Um, in the same way that we differentiate lowercase libertarians from uppercase libertarians as part of the actual libertarian party, um, independents are the same way. Um, they differentiate between independence and independent with a capital I as part of the independent party. So I think that we kind of have to wait until Justin changes his party affiliation officially, and then we'll see where he's at, whether he joins the membership of the Libertarian Party or joins the membership of the Independent Party. Tell me a little about Justin Amash. Why have you been, uh, I guess, tell me about Justin Amash and why you have been passionate about recruiting him. Um, I've been keeping an eye on Justin for several years, um, ever since the Freedom Caucus was founded, um, which of course he was a really he was a founder of the Freedom Caucus, um, and he's been a part of lots of movements um, within the legislation with people like Rand Paul and Thomas Massey. Um, the three of them were kind of the three musketeers of Republican liberty, so to speak, for a long time. Um, Rand has seemed to, since 2016, sort of drift away from that a little bit, and uh, libertarians especially have noticed that. Um, but Thomas and Justin really haven't. So. Um, he's, I've always kind of been zeroed in on him and his policies and, um, the way that he talks to people is really great. Um, he has a really good way of reaching people and that's always very important, um, for someone who, um, uh, has aspirations to, you know, maybe not always be a congressman, maybe be a governor or, um, president someday. So we're, yeah, he, I've always been interested in him. So that was not a surprise to me that this started happening. So what are the odds at this point? I know he's a maverick, but what are the odds that you think he becomes a libertarian as of now? Um, I think they're pretty good still. He hasn't taken anything off the table, including running for president. So I, as usual, we just kind of have to wait on Justin to, you know, make his intentions known. He's really good at not cracking when people ask him. He's been asked the same question for several months and has given the exact same answer every time. So um, he's kind of a master at that. Doesn't like showing his hand. <laughs> it's, no, it's his hand no. to play. He's probably a really great poker player. I would hate to play <laughs> poker with him. <laughs> what, what do you think is factoring into him? Why, why is he uh, holding that hand, so to speak? What are factors do you think he's waiting on to reveal if he's going to be libertarian or run for president? Um, quite honestly, I think it really boils down to money. Um, we do have a lot of um, people who sort of, I, I don't want to say in the background or in a kind of a dark shadowy way supply the libertarian party or libertarian, you know, candidates for president with money, but sometimes they're not always loud and proud about it. And, and that's okay. Everybody has their reasons, but I think Justin is sort of waiting on donors to come forward and say, Hey, we really want you. And at the same time, the donors are waiting on Justin to say, I'm a libertarian and this is what I'm going to do. Um, so I think both sides are kind of playing coy with each other and somebody eventually has to kick over the first domino. Right. And, and it seems like this could be, I mean, I think people are hoping it's one of many dominoes to fall right. from the Republican party. What's mm -hmm. your, what you mentioned Thomas Massey already, mm -hmm. again, being another one of those like Justin Amash that they catch themselves being one of very, very few Republicans to not vote the way Trump seems to want them to vote. Mm -hmm. Do you take this as more of an anti-Trump movement? He 
in his statement, it, it seems like it's anti-Trump. And then his own statement yesterday just says, eh, the whole GOP is kind of falling apart on me. How mm-hmm. much do you lend to Trump? How much do you lend to being the GOP just not being the great place for liberty anymore? Um, I think it's it's a mix of both. Um, but I believe for Justin, now I'm not one to put words in his mouth because I haven't spoken to him about it. Um, but I think for him, based on his actions, it really is about principle more than anything else. Um, and I think things have just reached such a breaking point um, with the cult of personality that surrounds Trump. Um, that didn't exist when Obama was in office. So it wouldn't have made sense for him to do it then. Um, I think it makes more sense for him to do it now because the hyper-partisanship has just reached a fever pitch um, with both parties, but especially with the Republican party lately, it seems. Yeah, there's always this threat. I think it's funny because it never really materialized because there was the never Trump Mm -hmm. Congress people they right. made it very public. They had very public squabbles with him. And a lot of those people have ended up just voting along with him 90, 95% of the time anyway. And so you just kind yes. of say, oh, so that never really materialized. Where it's funny because right. I feel like Amash wasn't one of the never Trump people. He's just like, these are kind of where I stand and has voted pretty consistently, I guess, with his own record. But mm-hmm. that record has not been in line with Donald Trump or the Republicans. No. And I... And I think as time has gone on, it's become less and less similar. Um, Many people have said, and I agree, uh, Justin didn't leave the GOP. The GOP left him. Um, They changed their principles overnight to, well, in the last two years of being very partisan and uh, voting for big government spending and not really paying attention to the deficit. I saw something the other day that said, the Republicans will be shocked to discover the deficit when a Democrat takes office again, because they haven't said anything about it for the last two years. Now, and I guess this is a good time to kind of hold his and your feet to the fire on this a little bit. This happens every time you recruit somebody from mm-hmm. from another party. They've got that pesky record. And so there are a few things that they've that that libertarians look at it and they're like, you know, for Build Weld, of course, there was the gun control and health care. Mm-hmm. I think for Justin Amash, he opposed the balanced budget amendment. Um, he's He said he'd never repeal ICE without some type of replacement. Um, he is pro-public school, you know, a lot of that. And so a lot of things that would naturally make libertarians shocked. What would you say to those things that he's supported that aren't necessarily libertarian? I think if you expect to agree with a candidate 100 percent, then you're probably the candidate. Okay. So just those, that's just, you're going to have to accept a few things. You're you're going to have differences with anyone that runs for office as well liked as some of our other libertarian candidates have been not necessarily for president, but people like Larry Sharp um, who are very well liked within the party um, and are very good people uh, personally. um, People still had disagreements with him over policy issues. And that's just, that's the nature of a party is that it functions on a spectrum. So we have anarchists on one side and then we have more minarchists on the other side. So that is really inevitable. Um, there's never going to be one person who unites every single libertarian. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I think that that's, uh, that's plain as day. I just, for some of them, I think especially some libertarians, they just, they see a lot of candidates right now that all seem pretty darn libertarian. They've been dues paying libertarians for a long time. And then they see mm-hmm. this outsider who hasn't necessarily been libertarian, who hasn't been a part of the party or whatever. And all of a sudden they're like, let's make this guy run for president. Uh, right. Do you think that it would be good for him to run for president at this for the Libertarian Party at this point in time? Um, I think any time within the next uh, four to six years is probably a great timeline for him. Um, and obviously that's up to him. And that's a very personal decision that he's going to make with his family. And it's not going to have anything to do with any of the work that I'm doing or any of the work that um, many other people are doing within the Libertarian Party. He's either going to be ready to do it or not ready to do it. There's a little pressure, though, because I think, and let's just be frank, it is hard. Even Bernie Sanders, while he goes independent, he becomes a Democrat when it's time to get reelected. And so this, the way Justin Amash is leaving, it doesn't look like he's going to go back to Republican to get elected in his home state. And no. so you kind of say the clock is probably ticking there, right? He probably won't make reelection. Of course, we've had some fantastic candidates before. Laura Ebke, who almost won uh, in Nebraska, but when she mm-hmm. left 
the Republican Party, you pretty much said, well, this is going to be very difficult at this point going forward. So isn't right. there like kind of a time bomb going on on Justin Amash? Because if you say, well, he probably won't make his next reelection, then his window to kind of run for president, get that message is probably very soon. Well, every candidate has um, a time limit, a, a, a time where they're at their prime and you can get two or three really good races out of them. And then after that, they're done. They're, they have spent all their political capital. They have exhausted their donors. Um, their donors don't want to donate to somebody who's lost three times. So yeah, it, there is a ticking time bomb, so to speak. Um, but that is true with every candidate. So, and, and sometimes the windows are a little longer and sometimes they're a little shorter. Um, and that has a lot to do with, um, just the general political climate of the country at the time, who's in office, um, and a lot of other factors. The other thing that, um, Justin has against him in Michigan is Michigan still has straight ticket voting. So if Justin is not running as a Democrat or a Republican, um, it doesn't matter what he's registered as he could be registered as the purple people eater party. Um, but it's going to be straight ticket voting the whole way down. And with other factors like the blue wave and things like that coming into play, um, it, it is going to make it very difficult for him in Michigan to get reelected to Congress. Yeah, it's funny that straight ticket voting is making a comeback. We we're getting rid of it as, with the advancement of literacy. We on the show actually have a, a, t uh, a show dedicated to straight ticket voting and how uh, it is. Obviously, it's very partisan. You can just click yes. it. And say, I want to vote for all the Democrats, all the Republicans. Oh, but that vote, that button to vote for all the Libertarians, that hasn't quite popped up yet. That, that hasn't materialized yet. Surprise. Right. 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 <laughs> and there, there was some severe pushback against straight ticket voting in New Mexico last fall um, when Gary Johnson ran for Senate. And as a result of that, they ended up recruiting a whole slate of Libertarian candidates so that if the Supreme Court in New Mexico did uphold straight ticket voting, that people actually had a full slate of libertarian candidates to push the button for. And that was a really great effort. There were some really great candidates that came out of that that did very well in their elections. Um, but ultimately the Supreme court in New Mexico didn't uphold straight ticket voting. However, the Supreme court in Michigan did. So I'm, I haven't looked into what the reasoning was for Michigan upholding straight ticket voting, but um, it seems like precedent doesn't really count at the state level at this point, which is a little bit scary. Yeah, I'm going to ask one more kind of tough question, then we'll get back into the fun stuff about Justin Amash, because okay. I'm, I'm excited as well, and I don't want to curb anybody's excitement. But it seems like with the Libertarian Party, the goal has been, ah, we really want a Libertarian, and then at the last second, we managed to get a Republican light or an ex-Republican mm -hmm. who, who's just a little more watered down compared to the rest of the candidates, and this just seems to be the cycle repeating itself. Would you have a problem with that? It hasn't seemed to be successful in the past. Why do you think Justin Amash would be more successful? Well, Justin has, again, going back to straight ticket voting, Justin didn't really have an option when he ran for Congress to be a libertarian. Um, he would have run once, not gotten elected, and that would have been all we ever knew of Justin Amash. And we may have had Justin Amash for the last 10 years as a really great libertarian, but as a really great libertarian who wasn't voting, wasn't sitting in Congress, wasn't influencing legislation or other congressmen around him. Um, so it's kind of a trade-off at that point. Um, what do you do? What's better? I think it depends on the state that you're from. Um, but again, that straight ticket voting is a huge hurdle. And until, until states by and large just abolish the practice entirely or institute some kind of replacement like ranked choice voting, um, we're going to continue to see that libertarians that are always libertarian in principle that once in a while get elected to the federal level as Republicans. Um, however, in Justin's case, his principles really haven't changed, which is a great thing um, because we have a 10 year voting record to look at. And it's really easy to see um, once you get past the first few years that his principles never changed. Right. Now, I've already brought up the negative stuff. The, the mm -hmm. He was opposed to the balanced budget amendment. He wants to, I guess he, he won't repeal Obamacare without another government funded healthcare program. He, uh, you know, all, all those class or won't repeal ice without some type of substitution in place. All those other things that white Mike libertarians go, eh? but let's talk about all the good stuff that might make libertarians go, ah, instead. So <laughs> what are some great, uh, some things that as a libertarian, you can actually look forward to with a Justin Amash candidacy, or even just the fact that he's in the party. Now, what are some great things that he lends to that? 
Um, he's a great speaker. He's great with connecting with people. And historically, the Libertarian Party has a really tough time with marketing. Um, we have a really hard time marketing to libertarians who aren't in the party yet. People who are libertarian, but maybe don't realize that they are. Um, they come to conventions or they come to party meetings and they see things that are a little off the wall. And those are people that have progressed further down the spectrum than they themselves have. And it kind of puts them off. So Justin is a great marketing tool. Um, I've already seen people in the Amash for President group who um, felt like they didn't have a political home anymore. They may have supported Cruz in the past and thought he was going to stand up to Trump. That turned out to not be true. So they sort of just, they left the GOP, but sort of unofficially. Um, several of them have already changed their affiliation to Libertarian Party. So Justin hasn't even declared and officially signed on as a libertarian with a card. Um, and people are already switching because they recognize their own principles um, line up with his. And I, I don't see that as a bad thing. Um, there's that joke, what's, what's the difference between a libertarian and an anarchist? Um, and it's about six months in the libertarian party. Um, once you join the party, um, you, you start to be educated by people that are around you. So I would, I would venture to guess that once Justin joins the Libertarian Party, starts running in more Libertarian circles versus Republican circles, that we will see his policy views mature and develop in a more Libertarian way. And I also don't see that as a bad thing. It's a really great thing for the party. Um, and it would be really nice if that was kind of a public process so other people could see it's possible to grow and change within a, within a party and they're not just going to kick you out. Right. No, and I've felt that, too. I, I feel like mm -hmm. I have to hold uh, I have to ask these journalistic questions about the negatives of them. And, and mm -hmm. I, I, sometimes it just comes down to there's there's a lot of I think people would be surprised at how how complex Congress is. And so it's like, well, I voted mm -hmm. against the balanced budget amendment, but that's because there was some buyout in it or, you know, some some phantom right. money going to yeah. some phantom mm -hmm. district. So I actually was opposing you know, uh, uh, cronyism, but it looks like I was opposing this. And so sometimes you just get to, to a point where you kind of get to actually be yourself when you do these things. Right. And sometimes there's a super majority. And so you can use your vote as a protest vote. So if you know that the balanced budget is going to overwhelmingly pass, um, and you still want to stick to your principles and say, I'm not going to caucus with the Republicans, then you can still feel comfortable pushing that no button and saying, no, I'm, I'm standing firm. Um, knowing that there's a super majority, knowing that it's going to get passed anyway. Um, one of the other positive things that you get with Justin is you get an anti-war candidate, which a lot of people have praised um, Tulsi Gabbard for, which is great, but Tulsi has a lot of non-libertarian economic policies. So that can present a problem as well. Right. This is certainly, uh, uh, and that's certainly a great comparison. We look at the Tulsi Gabbard and they say, yeah, she's a socialist on everything until you get to a couple of libertarian issues, uh, the drug war and foreign intervention. Um, right. And even then, I think you wonder how much that, they talk about the, the dog that gets strong is the one that you feed, right? And you <laughs> say, how much are they going to feed it? Because Trump was all about attacking that education system he just didn't feed that dog you know and so right. now we just have the same education system that we do now barack obama i think this is one i commonly bring up uh was all about the google for government where you could track every single dollar and where it went and then never even tried to get it passed. i don't even remember that and that just tells you how far that went it, it just died immediately it was a campaign so. promise that was made to right. people who because he had to pretend to care about the economy and that was his and that was it and so it's one of those things that libertarians me like me i, I saw it as a silver lining i'm like oh yeah we got mm -hmm. barack obama and yeah he used to be what even like a registered communist or socialist or whatever it was mm -hmm. but then i was like you know but maybe you know hey at least he support oh no he didn't feed that dog at all and i think with amash no. at least you have a little less of that worry because i think with gabbard she opposes the drug war and opposes a lot of foreign intervention but then doesn't actually do anything about it in her state whereas amash has actually done some things in that regards especially with marijuana uh yes legal you know legalization or at least uh, or, and maybe that's a step towards decriminalization of course which is what libertarians want me to say uh right. and that what we're ultimately going for but you know hopefully at least lily pads it over there and and immigration especially i think this has been his biggest point of contention with donald trump and and his mm -hmm. i mean even if he won't repeal ice without some type of replacement is it he's at least been honest in opposing the conditions on the border which which are horrific absolutely Absolutely. So uh, you get a more humanitarian candidate as well. Um, Justin is very human. 
Um, he doesn't put himself above anybody else. And he's definitely not a narcissist the way that Trump is. Um, some people like that. And I, I just don't, I just can't, um, I can't get behind somebody who, who acts that way. And that that's another good thing. It makes him easy, easy to relate to. And that translates into being able to reach voters and, and being able to increase a voter base and increasing a voter base for libertarians is a really good thing because, um, most of the time when you're a libertarian candidate, you know that even if every libertarian in the state voted for you, you are still not going to win your election. You somehow have to appeal to voters who are not libertarian. Oh, yeah. And that's it's something I asked literally all of the libertarian candidates that are debating on stage at some point. I'm like, look, you're not going to get through without borrowing from some of the mm -hmm. others. How do you borrow from them? Uh, right. Justin Amash, of course, has been good about that. And I think uh, may even play to his advantage in his home state as, as people kind of get sick of the Trumpism and the tribalism that have been going on to just say, I mean, at least he didn't do the, uh, oh, who's the candidate in uh, Pennsylvania that would like go from Republican to Democrat based on whichever one was riding the wave. Uh, I forget his name now, but at least he didn't register Democrat, right? And well, say the, point that, of, the point of that comment is that you don't remember his name. Right. So that that in itself is a problem. <laughs> right. That one dude who just stayed in yeah, Congress for four years being a leech and believing in nothing. Yeah. <laughs> that dude. I think he ran for president under both parties at one point. Like it's just oh what a goofball. But yeah, uh so so it's time to wrap up now. I we always like to give everybody the final words, but what what's I think even before we get to the final words, what's something that uh, we haven't covered with Justin Amash that you'd like to get across? Um I don't know. I, I feel like I talk about him all the time. And I think that's because I'm, I'm in the group and I'm trying to get people organized. Um, if you do want to be a part of the group, um, it's a mosh for president number four. Um, it's on Facebook. You can find us on, you can find us there. Um, we have a couple of a mosh 2020 or draft a mosh pages on Twitter floating around, follow one of those. Um, we're also raising money to hold a rally for him in Grand Rapids. And um, that money is being funneled to a PAC. Um, our org the group that I'm working with is still a completely grassroots organization. It's all volunteer. Um, and I think a rally would be a really great way to show Justin that people of all political parties are, are behind you. Um, maybe not everybody, but um, that there are people across party lines that are willing to donate to you, willing to talk to you, willing to be open to your ideas, if, even if they don't agree with them. Um, and I think that's a really good thing. I just, I hate to say that I don't see how it could go wrong because there's always ways that it can go wrong. Um, but for now, it seems like a net positive. I, I'll i start with my final words. I will give you the final words on this. For me, I, I always love to see somebody, I, I made the jump from the GOP as well. I was mm -hmm. part of the Tea Party thing, and it was like, finally, we're going to actually balance the budget and actually be okay with, with gay marriage and, and the drug war, ending the drug war and all kinds of great stuff. And just right. none of it happened. And it was direct mm -hmm. our opposition from the GOP, from the RNC. I've detailed it in our last wall journal that, I mean, it was very, it was very in your face. The RNC absolutely opposed us. And, right. and, and that movement and would intentionally, they would run campaigns against our candidates that were liberty minded. And I've tried to change the Republican party and I, I just couldn't do it. And mm -hmm. uh, so I, I am, I, I am loving to see in the journey. I think that there is a great balance that we should have on skepticism about him, things he said about libertarianism before, about uh, his opposition to what I, everything I mentioned before, balancing the budget and whatnot, and to say, hey, what was that about? You know, is that something that you wanna change? You know, is that it, it, at this point in time, it's okay to make clear to a candidate when they were when you feel that they were wrong on a policy. At the same time, let's not make that about that what all the candidate is about. Because right. in every couple of ways that we can find that we might have a serious disagreement with them on and an honest disagreement with them on, you can probably find 10 other things where you're like, oh yeah, that's awesome. And so don't get lost in the hate and, and and I think provide a fair amount of focus on the things that are great as well. I want Justin Amash to work in this party. I wanted Bill Weld to work in this party. I want right. I want them, and I not because I want them to take over the party. I just want them to embrace our values eventually or mm -hmm. leave. You know, you find that with people that aren't really libertarians, they leave. You know, right. and, and it's not for them. You know, I mm -hmm. think a great example, Matt Kino. You know, wanted a lot of government intervention. 
He's a democratic socialist now. He left because right. this party wasn't for him. So right. let's welcome him here. Let's get him here. Let's have him, like you said, the six months. Let's put him on that path to become more libertarian and embrace the good speaking points. And I just think give him a fair shake. If you support somebody else, fine. But I think there's no point in being, I, I, I do not want to see him get the Bill Weld treatment where he's just constantly got a couple of things looming over his head the whole time. Mm -hmm. and, and it just, and it ends up just souring to the point where he's like, ah, fine, I'm going back to the old guys anyway. We need this right. movement to grow if we're going to win. We need to pull it from Republicans and Democrats if we are going to shrink the size of government at all. So I right. think that those are my final thoughts, but your final thoughts, Elaine. My final thoughts are, um, like you said, just getting him here is the important part and we can work out details later. Um, it's fine to allow someone the space to grow as a candidate and grow philosophically as a libertarian. That's not a bad thing. Um, I feel like a lot of libertarians want to make people think that they have to be a perfect libertarian before they can even join the party. And that's not true. Um, and I don't want people to think that you don't have to be a perfect libertarian. It's okay to have questions. It's okay to know that you need to grow within the party. Um, and like you said, again, um, I, I hate to use the phrase, the trash takes itself out because some people just decide this is not for them and that's okay. We have a really toxic culture within the libertarian party that needs to be addressed. We are supposed to be a family and frequently we are eating each other alive and that's not okay. Um, and I think Justin sees that from the outside and maybe that's something that he is, uh, that makes him hesitant about jumping in and signing on and getting a membership card and saying, I'm here and I'm a libertarian. Um, so I think we all need to take it upon ourselves to be more welcoming, to take an attitude of let's educate people first before we go kicking them out. Um, and, uh, just in general, be nicer to each other. Um, well, presidential election years have a habit of really dividing our party. And I think that's really unfortunate and really sad. We are the fastest growing political party in this country. We are the third largest, um, why do let's make it the second largest. There's no reason we can't do that. Um, but again, we have to change our culture in order to continue attracting better candidates, good candidates that can recognize these problems will not join the libertarian party if these problems persist. So my final thoughts are going into 2020, just be kinder, just be a kinder libertarian, um, be more helpful, be more welcoming. And if someone decides the party's not for them, it's not a reason to hate them. It's not a reason to, um, to shun them. It's, it's just a reason to say, well, that's okay. You tried it. It wasn't for you. Um, go find your political home with some, with someone else in another party. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, if you can't, can't reconcile it. Yeah. Good point. I think 90% of the country cares about politics every four years. We can go back to info, infighting the other four years or the other three years, but let's <laughs> let's make this fourth one a one that we want people to say, "Man, I want to be a part of that," as opposed to "No way," you know. Right. So exactly, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Elaine Joan, again for having us on the show for doing all the work with uh, recruiting uh, Justin Amash. Thank you for your insight. Thank you. Uh, I hope everything pans out for you. I, I, uh, I hope so too. <laughs> already got the Ford Prez website, so you you got a lot of <laughs> chips uh, riding on this hand, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, I do. Okay, well, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. It was nice to talk to you. You too. Until then, uh, Elaine and viewers, keep fueling the fires of liberty.